Hello and welcome to Maker Camp. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. Had a little trouble logging in, um, but we are here. Um, hi, my name is Sandy Roberts and I am a STEM educator, the Makerspace coordinator for the Warren County Library System and the author of the Big Book of Maker Camp projects. Um, and I am thrilled to be back here at uh, Family Maker Camp uh, for the last workshop I'll be doing this summer. So it's been quite a crazy trip, I'm sure you can agree, but I have really enjoyed being able to connect with all of you uh, through this format and share some really fun projects. Uh, and I will be back in the fall, I promise. I'm, I'm addicted, I have to keep on doing this. Um, but today we have a really fun um, day plan. So, uh, we are going to be doing some origami that lights up and moves and all kinds of fun things like that. Today I'm using one of these brand new um, make kits that you can get in the maker shed and they have a couple different ones coming out. This one is the origami robot uh, paper circuit kit and the project included is a blinky robot which is really awesome. It comes with everything you need but we're going to be using components in here to do some other really fun projects that I'll put up on Maker Camp as well so that you can do them yourself but these kits are really great. They kind of have everything you need. Um, you know, has the origami paper, has the batteries, has the LEDs, um, all in one nice waterproof <laughs> plastic container. These are small and they're so easy to just throw in your backpack or, um, you know, it's very easy to find space for them. I really love that. I am organizationally challenged. So <laughs> having something like this is really awesome. So I'm excited to get to use this kit. Now, one of the big differences between what you might find in the maker kit and what you might get traditionally when you're doing paper circuits is a lot of times when you do paper circuits, you find this kind of stuff. This is um, copper tape and we use it in paper circuits um, because we need to connect our power source to our load. In this case, our LED, basically what you want to power. Usually in like a socket in the wall, you'd use wire. In paper circuits, we use copper tape and it is conductive. The adhesive is conductive as well. And that lets you basically make a circuit on any surface. So copper tape is awesome, revolutionized paper circuits and all kinds of projects like that. But the next revolution <laughs> is maker tape. And that's what's included in the kit. And you can buy this in Maker Shed too. Um, at first I was kind of like, oh, it's just another conductive tape. Like what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. It is um, a nylon fabric based tape. So first off, this, you can accidentally cut yourself on the edges. Not so with maker tape, that's not gonna happen. So it's a little bit safer and as an educator, that matters to me. I always want kids to be able to have a good experience and not worry about getting injured. Um, so um, the maker tape does help me out with that. The other thing that's really nice is that the flex on it can go around corners that I find sometimes copper tape has an issue with. Um, it doesn't crinkle as much either, which is really great because um, sometimes this can um, get all, all kind of, if you've ever used aluminum foil, you know, it can get like all crinkly up. This doesn't seem to do that as badly. Um, so I, I am a maker tape convert. I really love this stuff. Um, and like I said, you can get it in the maker shed. It's not a whole lot more expensive than copper tape and it is worth it. Um, I also love it because uh, you can use it right on fabrics. So you can make light up felt and masks and bracelets and stuff, and this will stick to it. So it's a no sew project. Um, so we'll be using maker tape today uh, for our projects. You can, of course, source all of these items yourself. We need, we'll be using um, coin cell batteries. These are uh, usually the 2025 or 2032. They're little three volt flat batteries. Um, we will need some LEDs. Today we're going to be using both the 10 millimeter larger kind of gumdrop LEDs as well as our traditional 5 millimeter um, LEDs. And these that come in the kit are blinking LEDs, so it's super fun. Um, we will also need a couple tools. Um, you're going to need a pair of scissors to cut your maker tape. That's really it. You want to have probably a pair of, where'd they go? needle nose pliers on hand for today. You're gonna need origami paper or um, you can always cut up eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper into squares and you can use that. I'll be using that for one of our projects today. Um, and then you'll want some decorative items, a Sharpie um, for our ladybug, some Google eyes, that sort of thing. So that's all you really need today. It's pretty simple. And like I said, everything comes in the kit. The other thing that does come in this kit that you're gonna want are these little motors 
These are great. They're little vibration uh, motors, vibrating motors, and they have sticky back. So you just stick them right onto your project. No soldering required. These are really great. You can order them separately, but like I said, they come right in the kit. So um, that's really convenient. All right, so what are we making today? We've got three projects we're gonna do today, going from kind of a very simple one up to our more complicated projects. So our first one is this little um, lantern that we're gonna make. It's kind of like a little night light, and you can't see it <laughs> right now, but let me show you what it looks like. Oh, darn it. Um, let me show you what it looks like really quickly. Um, I'm gonna just bring up the image, which I have unfortunately had prepared technical difficulties, as I said, um, seem to be the name of the game today. But we're makers, we work with it. Doesn't bother us, right? Let me show you, I just wanna show you what it looks like when it is lit up, because it is really, really lovely. And here we go. Just gonna scale that for you so you can see it easily. There we go. So this is what this little lantern looks like when it is all lit up and glowing. So you do notice that we need a CD for that. And oh, <laughs> so I do have just an old CD-ROM and the binder clips come in the kit. So we're gonna use a binder clip and the binder clip acts as our switch for this. So I don't think you, you can't really see it in the light, but is it gonna work for me? No, you can't see it, but that's why I had the picture. So that's one of our projects today. We are also going to make this really adorable little ladybug. Can you see that? This little ladybug. Now, what's fun about the ladybug is that once we add our battery by the wings, the little motor that I mentioned before that we put on there is going to make this vibrate. It's basically a vibrobot. So it's an origami vibrobot. It's really fun. And a couple googly eyes because everything's better with googly eyes. Am I right? I'm right. I know I'm right. And then the last one, this is the most complicated project, but, and this is a tiny version. This is our uh, ninja star, origami ninja star, and we've added LEDs to each of the points. We're gonna be using blinking LEDs in just a bit, but what's really fun about this is at night, you go throwing this around and you watch the um, lights, it looks like a UFO, it's really fun. And if you have a long exposure app on your camera, or if you have a camera that can keep the um, aperture open, you can actually you know, paint with light and track that light in the dark. It's super fun. So I will say, originally this project was in my book, okay, um, and I used copper tape for it. And you can see it, <laughs> it got pretty beat up. This survives a lot better. That flexibility of the fabric tape makes this project so much easier to do and it makes it last a lot longer. So I'm really excited about that. So those are our three projects for today. We can go ahead and get started. Um, and I'm gonna switch over to my document camera, crossing fingers, no technical issues, and everything works the way it's supposed to. I'm always, it's always the moment of truth, right? Here we go. <gasps> Yay, it all worked. Okay, hello. So I've got my kit and the, all my other materials. I've got a little bit of everything around today. So we're gonna do our lantern first. And for this, I do suggest you can, of course, use um, the origami paper, but I'm actually gonna use a piece of eight and a half um, by 11 paper for this. I cut it into a square on my paper cutter. You can also fold it into, you know, to make a square out of any piece of paper, you fold the diamond and then cut the extra off. But I'm gonna use that today. Um, and I am going to grab a binder clip. I will tell you, using binder clips as, um, as switches, one of the things you want to be aware of is that you do want to sand your binder clip a little bit um, just to expose. You don't want the enamel, so you want to make sure that that's exposed. You can also, if you prefer, in fact, this works really nicely with just a paper clip as your switch. Um, I need my jumbo LEDs. So I'm gonna grab this green one, which I think that'll be really pretty. Again, that's from the kit. And I need a battery. Now, <laughs> um, gosh, it was weeks ago now when I did my light up sunglasses and I wasn't smart. I didn't check my batteries in advance and I discovered they did not work when I went to go and light everything up. So we're gonna make sure that we don't make that mistake. And to check your um, LED, you have 
Let's see, I'm gonna zoom in for you so I can explain this, just in case you haven't ever used this kind of materials before. So, every LED has a longer lead and a shorter lead. The longer lead is positive, the shorter one is negative. In all circuits, you have to make sure that the flow of electricity um, leaves the battery, the negative side of the battery, goes through your circuit, through your load in a, the right direction because this is a directional item. Um, and it goes round through your load and then back to the battery. So my battery has a plus side. I'm gonna line that up and just check to make sure, yep, it works, okay? Oh, and I see Josh is mentioning, thank you, Josh. Um, Maker this is Maker Tape brand fabric tape. It is, it's available in the Maker Shed. And I love his idea of just wrapping a little bit of the Maker Tape around the binder clip to get a really good connection. We're gonna try that, thank you, great tip. Okay, so let us get started on making our lantern. This is actually kind of a classic origami um, paper balloon, if you've ever seen that. Um, and like I said, I will have all these instructions typed up and on the website a little bit later today with uh, <laughs> power outages last night. I wasn't able to get quite as much done as I had hoped. What are you gonna do? It's gonna rain sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna start by folding. Oop. Helps if I zoom out, right? <laughs> okay, so you're gonna start by folding down. Okay, and I'm actually going to grab my glasses. You know, getting older, gotta use the glasses. That's all right. Okay, and I'm gonna crease this nicely. And then I'm gonna fold in half across like this. And crease that. All right, now this is kind of the part that uh, is a little challenging. You're gonna lift this up and you're gonna fold it so that, and this is where it's actually kind of nice to use origami paper, but we're gonna make a kind of triangle here and crease that down like that, okay? Did you see how I did that? So you can kind of see it's like a cup on the inside. Now we're gonna flip, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. All righty. So you can see I'm taking my time to line this up. This project works the best if you make sure that things stay pretty symmetrical on it. There we go. Crease that nicely. And oh, Okay. <laughs> See what I mean? This can be a little bit challenging to get it. But there we go. Now we've got our two nice triangles. Make sure that that's nice and neat. Okay. It's Like I said, it is absolutely worth taking the time to fold that as neatly as you can. You're going to get a better result. Okay. Whew always have my instructions. Now, we're going to take one flap. We're coming up to the top of our little triangle. Okay. A lot of this project is do on one side, repeat on the other. So it's kind of nice because once you get it down, you just kind of keep on doing the same kind of motions. So there we go. Like that. Then we're going to take our point and we're going to fold to center. And again, you're going to just kind of, there we go, okay. So we fold that to center, now we're going to fold the next one to the center. And we're kind of creating like a, kind of an elongated hexagon shape there, okay? All right, now this is the tricky bit. We are going to basically insert this in here to make a pocket. So you can see that I kind of creased it here and released on each of them because I find that that helps a bit. Now you're going to take this point and fold it down along the triangle towards the center and crease it nicely. I'm going to do the same on the other side. OK. 
okay. Now, if you see here, we've created a pocket in there. This tab needs to go into that pocket. And this is a bit tricky. Don't feel bad if you need to kind of undo your, your origami a little bit, but you kind of slide it in there. Ta-da! Just kind of wiggle it until you get it in. This is what's gonna hold our lantern together. Okay, we're gonna repeat that on the other side. This I find the most challenging part of it. And this is actually one of the reasons I prefer to do this with a larger piece of paper. I don't have nimble fingers like I bet some of you do. And as you can see, my fingernails could probably use a little help. Anyway, so there you can see, now both of them are tucked in. And like I said, symmetry, we're gonna flip, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna take our corner up to the top of our triangle, like that, crease it well, our other corner up to the top of our triangle. Now it's a nice diamond. Okay, we're gonna take the point of our diamond, bring it to center. And again, I'm just kind of making sure I'm lining it up nicely with the other side. We're gonna take the other side and pull it into the center, creasing it well, like that. And now we're gonna fold these tabs in. And like I said, I just like to give it a fold and unfold and then from the top to the center again. This one, top to the center. A little lantern here. Okay, and we're gonna tuck that into the pocket, just like we did on the last one. And like I said, if you missed any of this, I will have it all typed up with photos for you a little later today, now that I've got internet and power back. Um, okay. And I'm gonna tuck this one in. All right, Ooh. crease it all down, make sure it's all in a good place. Now, this is the fun part. This is the part that kids always love. We are actually going to blow into the bottom of our lantern. So we're gonna blow into the bottom of our lantern and it's gonna puff up. Now, you don't wanna really blow it up like a balloon, you kinda of wanna blow air into it, so. <laughs> yes, I giggle every time I do it. It's fun. <laughs> there we go. Ta-da! One paper balloon, which now we're going to turn into our lantern. So I have my CD, and this is nice because it reflects the light really beautifully at night. And I have my LED, and I'm just going to insert the LED, this nice jumbo LED, right into the bottom of my lantern. And I'm going to pull the legs, paying attention. This one, the longer one, is my positive. Um, what I often do when I'm doing more complicated projects is I will get a marker and I will actually mark which one is my positive. This project, not such a big deal. So I want to try and get these kind of as flat as I can, okay, so that they don't wobble. All right, that's pretty good. And we're going to just kind of center it here on our CD. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna stay. That's okay. okay. My maker tape, quick tip using copper tape or maker tape, keep it in the bag um, and just pull out what you need from the Ziploc right there. Um, so I'm just gonna measure. I need a piece. It's gonna go to one end. Where are my scissors? Here we go. And what I'm gonna do is see if you can see this. Let me zoom a bit. You can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna place this tape so that it is over the lead of my LED. So you can see that that is in place there, okay? And that way I make a good connection. You can, if you like, um, curl these with a needle nose pliers or with your fingers. I don't find it's really necessary for this particular project. I'm keeping it nice and simple. So I'm just gonna put my maker tape, stick it, whoop, stick it to my positive lead and then just <laughs> sticky, sticky. If you prefer to, you can also use a little bit of scotch tape to um, kind of 
put everything in place. A little invisible tape. There we go. Got that. And I'm going to do basically the same thing on the other side. But let me show you the difference. On the other side, we're just going to go halfway and leave some space to add our battering. So we don't need quite as big a piece. Okay. And I'm just kind of eyeballing. We're going to do the same thing, just attach it to the negative lead. There we go. Okay, so now I've got that attached. Now, if it's wobbling on you like this one is, it doesn't bother me. If it's something that, you know, you want it nice and, and um, flat, just use a little bit of hot glue in there and hold it down, or you can use a little bit of uh, invisible tape. Um, okay, so now we've got our um, spot for our battery. So this is our negative. The battery has a rough side, that's the negative side. Smooth side is positive. So we're gonna wanna attach it here. And the easiest way to do that is just to take a little bit of your maker tape, take off the backing. And both copper tape and maker tape work the same way with this uh, backing here. Let's see. I really have gotta stop biting my nails. Because it's tough to work with these tapes without uh, fingernails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a little loop with the adhesive side out. If you've ever hung a poster, you've probably done this before. So I've got the adhesive side out. That adhesive is conductive, so it will conduct electricity for me. I'm just going to stick my battery down like that. And then I'm going to take a bit of my tape and I'm going to go over here, but I want to just take my binder clip and make sure that where I go, I can reach. And what is really helpful for this, just get yourself a permanent marker and kind of mark it so you know where you're aiming for. Always have, uh, good to have one of these on around. And we're just going to cut that. And now, it's very, very important, and if you've done paper circuits with me before, you know that you do not want these to cross because that will complete your circuit. And then, well, there won't be any point in having a switch, will there? Um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull out a little bit. I'm gonna take Joshua's uh, awesome suggestion of just sticking a little bit of this tape on my binder clip. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick a bit of tape there, wrap it around, and then this will act as our switch. And so to turn on your little lantern, anytime you want, you just slide your binder clip on and you can see, you can kind of see it, it's glowing green. It's pretty bright in this room. But there you go, that's your little origami lantern. And I think it's a pretty neat project. I plan to, uh, to do this one for the library a little bit later this year. So as soon as I can get some kits out to them. So that's our first project, that's our lantern. <laughs> I'm gonna take that off so I don't kill my battery because I think my daughters are probably gonna want these. Okay, so our next project is, as I mentioned, our little um, ladybug. So let me grab the battery so you can see what happens. I'll just take a fresh one out. I don't know what I did with the battery. I'm always losing batteries. Like I said, organizationally challenged. That's why these kits are so good. Everything stays in one box and I don't lose anything. I love that. Okay, so when we slide our battery in, our little, whoop, <laughs> you know what, time out, I like the girl. Come on. <laughs> there we go, come on. I've been playing with these a little bit, so they're, they're uh, beat up pretty badly. So there we go, we've got our little Vibrobot. <laughs> and again, yes, I amuse myself. This is why I have the best job. All right, so how do we make her, or him? Very, very simple. Just gonna grab myself a piece of origami paper from the kit. And again, if you don't have a color you like, you can always use paper and just cut it down. But the kit, conveniently enough, comes with a perfect red for a ladybug. I'm gonna grab myself one of these vibrating motors. And again, I love that they are just sticky back, so I just stick them on, easy. And I've got my battery, I'm ready to go. So, we start with our paper 
as a diamond like this and we are going to fold it in half. Now, some people prefer to just cut it in half and use less paper. That's up to you. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it, I'm not too worried. It is a little thicker this way, a little heavier. So it is 100% your call. And especially if you're trying to be very economical on your paper and you don't wanna waste, you can totally cut it to a triangle before you begin. But the important thing is we have our triangle. Okay, I'm gonna take my tip up to the top of my triangle and give that a good crease. And again, I will have all these instructions up on the Maker Camp site for you a little later on today. I promise. I took all the photos and everything and then lost power. And that happens. Okay, so we brought both of our points up and now we've got a nice little diamond. We are gonna fold our wings by, we wanna kind of fold halfway down, but you wanna go out just a little bit. If you've done um, like the firefly, the origami firefly, that kind of a project. It's the same type of deal. I do want to get that nice and neat there and out. So there you go. Okay. And you're going to do the same on the other side and you don't have to be perfect about it. I can be a little bit of a perfectionist about this and I'm going to do my very best not to drive myself crazy today about it. All right. So now we've got our little wings, and, you know, I don't like to make them too wide for this because I want to kind of hide the battery that's in there and I want a good connection with the battery. So um, now we are going to take the top and we're going to fold down, but we don't want to go all the way down. We're going to go maybe, um, maybe half an inch, quarter of an inch. And we're forming the head. Okay. And we're going to unfold. Now we're going to take this point and we're going to fold it to the line that we made, to that crease that we just made in the center. Okay, increase that well. And then we're going to fold it again. And we're going to again fold it to the line that we made, to that crease that we made. Okay. I'm just flipping my page. Don't want to mess it up. Okay. So now we are going to fold it all the way down so that it overlaps. You see how now it overlaps? And that's gonna be our head. And you're gonna crease it again right there. Okay, now we need to shape kind of the body of our ladybug because this doesn't look much like a ladybug right now. So what you're gonna do is fold it. There we go, fold it in. Just kind of giving it an angled shape. And this is where you can be very creative about it. It's really up to you how you want that to work. I will say you kind of don't want to end up with too much underneath. So I tend to go a little wider body on my, my ladybug. Okay. And now you're going to do your best to do the same on the other side. And again, I'm not going to drive myself crazy and think I need to make it perfect. I'm just going to go as close to symmetry, symmetrical as I can. So there you go. So now we've got the basic shape of our body, still a little pointy on the sides. And I actually really like um, adding a little bit of height here because it, um, roll, it, it moves around a little bit better. So we're just gonna kind of fold that corner in. So you can see this is what it looks like underneath. Okay, we're gonna do the same over here. We're gonna just fold that corner in, take away some of the angular shape. Okay, so that's basically our, our ladybug's body shape. Um, from here, you may want to just pull the wing tips under. Okay, there you go. Not strictly necessary, just more of a. So that's our basic ladybug body. At this point, you're going to get yourself a marker. I suppose you could use paint if you want. And you're just going to give it a little bit of coloring to make it a little more um, distinctive as your ladybug. And you can put some dots on there. At this point, if you want to um, attach your Google eyes, you can. Um, if you want to draw eyes on there, you can. Again, it's your bug. Have fun. Make it special. Okay. And, you know, I'm just going to give it a couple of quick dots. Now, <laughs> if you want to make a more accurate uh, ladybug, you may want to get out some white out too because you will notice some ladybugs have white dots as well. But 
it. I'm not going to get into entomology here. Um, there are lots of different types of ladybugs, most of them from Asia at this time of year. You'll see them uh, in the fall kind of clumping together by windows. Um, and they're different than, <laughs> so there's lots of species of, of ladybugs. Anyway, you can attach your Googles if you want. So now we're going to do our circuit. Very easy. We are going to turn it over. We're going to start by attaching our motor. All right. Um, you've got two leads here. Classically, your red is a positive, and whatever is either black or blue is going to be your negative. So let me just zoom in so you can see these. Let's see. Okay, so this will be your positive, and this is your negative. And like I said, um, most of these things are directional. Um, I don't know if this vibrational motor is technically directional, but you're going to want to test it. And you can see, there it goes. It's vibrating very nicely. Um, good, so we've tested that. And all we're going to do is just kind of stick it here in the body. The only thing you want to make sure is that these wires have enough space to wrap around. So kind of a little bit, whoop, I went off camera. Um, widen out a little bit. So kind of a little bit uh, towards the back. And again, super easy. Peel off that uh, tape and it sticks right on. You don't even have to do anything else. Okay. Now, this is where it's important that you know which is the positive and negative. We are going to do positive onto the body of our, our um, ladybug. Now I'm just going to gently fold back my wings so I can work here. We're going to take a little piece of uh, maker tape and we're going to put it across the body. That's going to give us contact for our, um, our battery. Okay, so want a nice, a good size piece of it, however you stick that battery in there because it just kind of slides in. And this is kind of the other reason that we fold the tips of the wings back because once we put it all together, they'll help hold that battery in place. Okay, and we're just going to kind of put it across the body of our ladybug. And I think I made that just a little bit too long, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim that. And you can see this is very easy to work with. I have not had a whole lot of luck um, carrying it. I tend to like to, to cut it. Maybe I'm just a bit of a neat freak on that. All right, so that's going to be for our positive connection, and it would help if I actually attached my battery, uh, <laughs> attached the motor. So you can just put this under when you first put on your bit, but I've got a touch extra, so I'm just going to do that. Make sure the lead is attached well. Okay, now we have to do our negative. And the way we're going to do that is going to be we're going to attach it on the wing right there. So. Again, just need a piece of tape that's going to be about the right length. I can always trim if I need to. Taking a look at the time, but we're doing okay. I know Kathy uh, Cesari last week, she said, it's easier to pull the backing away from the tape than it is to try to pull the tape off of the backing. And she is 100% right on that. Of course, I'm fumble fingers today either way. <laughs> All right, so when we do this, we're gonna want to attach our negative lead um, to the maker tape. And I kind of keep it close to the center because again, I want to be able to get a good contact. And this one's a little harder than the one inside the body, but there we go. And you just press that down. And again, I've got a little extra, no big deal. I'll just cut off any excess. Keep it nice and neat. Okay, there we go, we're all wired. Now you're gonna wanna just kind of shape your body a little bit. At this point, I like to give it a little bit of a bend down because that will help keep some pressure on our battery um, when we put it in there. So, there we go. And now we just want to remember our positive is down and <laughs> you kind of want to get it down towards the head enough that it stays in. There we go. Woo! <laughs> and so this is really fun for kids because you can have them then think about how can I make sure that it stays in there? How can I develop my bug so that I have a little bit better contact? Usually I have a little more success with it staying in than I am right now. It's wobbling out on me today. How do you get it? <laughs> so you can.
can, of course, if you want, just use a little piece of the loop inside there to keep it in. Um, <laughs> um, but I kind of like sliding it in and out and just putting it right into the head there. Ta -da. Come on. The other one was working better. I think maybe I made this body just a little too wide. All right. But you can see. You can also do like a binder clip. There's a lot of different ways you can make that stay in well. So that's a nice design challenge. OK. So that's our little ladybug. I'm going to try and make sure. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's having a little trouble because my, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but my mat is um, warped from a melted crayon kindness rock that I did the other day. Probably shouldn't have been on my rubber mat. <laughs> okay, so last project of the day is our little ninja star. And this is your, I, a lot of kids have done ninja stars before. They're a classic camp project, super fun to do. And I just wanted to make it into a circuit. This is actually a parallel circuit. That's why we're able to do um, four LEDs. Usually when you are doing um, an LED with a coin cell battery. You can power one, maybe two, off of a single three volt bat battery because the LEDs each draw about three volts. But by making this a parallel circuit, we're essentially running two batteries um, in like a ladder. So instead of the electricity going to each individual LED, it's kind of going up the ladder and on each ladder rung are two LEDs that are being powered and that conserves um, our voltage and it allows us to power more LEDs. One thing you need to know about this is that um, each color of LED draws slightly different power. So if you mix the colors, <laughs> you may end up with the situation where um, the lowest voltage color is going to draw the energy and the others aren't going to because electricity likes to flow where it's easiest and it's going to skip things that are harder if it has the opportunity. Um, so you want to try and do four of the same color. Sometimes you, you can mix blue and green and yellow and red together, but you can't usually do like blue and red. It's not going to work. So a little tip there. I've got maker tape all over me. Now I am actually going to use um, larger paper for this today just because it's a little hard to see, um, see me folding it, I discovered, because this, this gets quite tiny. So let me just give myself a quick moment to clean up. And I'm gonna grab myself some binder clips because I'm gonna use the binder clips from the, um, from the kit to hold my LEDs in place while I work. And where did I put my bag of LEDs? Here they are. And I'm gonna need another battery. One nice thing about these kits, they come with a ton of batteries. So you can get a lot of projects done, uh, no problem. So these are the red LEDs that we're going to use today. And again, I'm going to test them and you can see they blink. So that just adds like another really fun, again, when they're flying around at night, they look like UFOs. It's really cool. So I'm going to need four of those. Three and four. I am going to grab my needle nose pliers um, just in case. Don't usually need them. Okay. Just cleaning up a little bit, guys. Sorry. I'm making a mess today. It's all over. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I go on is I'm going to take a moment to use my permanent marker and each of those long leads, the positive leads, I'm just going to color with marker because with this project, you really have to pay careful attention to negative and positive. So the direction of the electricity, uh, so the, the electricity flows in the proper direction. So what I do is I just color my positive LED, my positive leg with, um, a little bit of Sharpie, a little bit of permanent marker, and then it's easier for me later. Um, but I like to do this nice and early because otherwise I end up with marker all over my hands <laughs> as I'm working, which is not you know a tragedy. But So I'm just gonna do that. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this. Some people like to um, use neon nose pliers to turn them into different shapes, like they'll do a square for the negative and a circle for the positive and just kind of curl them. Um, but for me, this is what I like to do. I find this to be the easiest solution. So just going to take a minute to do that and let that sit and kind of dry while I'm folding my star. Okay. 
Now, for this project, we do need two pieces of paper. And we'll be folding them both basically the same way and then combining them at the end. So this is a really fun opportunity to um, get to play with multiple colors. And I'm just, I'm literally taking out the book and looking for the project, which I know is in here. I thought it was in chapter four. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, at this point, it's been a little while and I tend to forget where the heck things are in the book. So why don't I check the notes? Uh, yeah, project four, one third, oh, page 135. You would think I would know where everything is. So you can see I've got the firefly that we did the other week, got our luna moth from the other week, and here we are with our ninja star. And I know, I wrote it. I still like to make sure I have the instructions in front of me, just in case, because you never know. It's easy sometimes to get confused. So we're going to start with our paper. We're going to fold it to start with our two squares. Now, this paper is a little thicker than traditional origami paper. So bear with me, because it's going to be a little more challenging to fold. But that's another thing I have my uh, permanent marker for. It works kind of like a bone folder. So, good crease, and I'm going to do the same to this one. Like I said, with this one, it's another situation where you're going to do the same to each one. Okay, now I'm going to open and fold like a book into the center. Give myself a bit of light so I can see what I'm doing here. Creasing well. Fold the other into the center. I know there's a name for this and I cannot think of it. Anybody out there know what the name for this fold is? I feel like I feel like there's a, a specific type of fold. I cannot remember it at the moment though. So I folded the two sides in and now I'm gonna fold it up. And Again, crease that well. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Open it, one side into center, my other into center. Okay, and fold it together. There we go. Now I've got both my pieces. All right, I'm going to orient them like this, and we're going to fold top down. So it's halfway. I'm just going to do that real quick. Um, and again, crease it well. Same to the other. Like I said, this paper is a little thicker. Best I could get my hands on today. So the thinner the paper you work with, the better. Like if you have proper copy paper, this is more of a construction paper kind of thing. But, okay, so now we're gonna just open those. And this is where you have to do a little bit different for each one. I wanna make sure that I've got it, yes. We are going to take this corner, and we're gonna fold to make kind of a, and we wanna make sure we're getting it on that crease. There we go, and crease that nicely. And you can see why I'm doing this a little bit uh, larger, right? And then we're gonna do the other, so we're gonna flip this one because we want it to be mirror of the first. There we go, and we crease it. Okay, now we're gonna fold this one the same way, but in the opposite direction. So, kind of creating almost, it looks like a little bit of a, almost a knot. And I'm gonna crease, 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 and do the same to this. I remember one year we were making these. It was a rainy day at Maker Camp, so we weren't able to go outside like we normally would. And um, the kids must have made, I don't know, dozens of them and they were flying all over the place. Okay, now we flip. Okay, we've got our mirror images. Now we are going to, this is where I always get myself confused. Am I doing that right? Yes. Okay, 
this corner comes down to center. Well, not center exactly, but you're going to form kind of a triangle. And there we go. We're going to do the same on the other side. See, it's all. And then we do the same on the other side. And again, this will be easier if you're using origami paper. As the, just like the, the stuff from the kit. The origami paper in the kit works really nicely for this. But again, I wanted it nice and big because otherwise it's hard to see. Same thing on this one. Whoop, I almost did that. If you do, <laughs> that's not going to work. Got to go opposite. Okay. And at this stage, it kind of looks like a duck to me. Doesn't it kind of look like a duck a little bit? No? I don't know. I think it looks like a duck. <laughs> Maybe a puppy? It actually looks like this toy I used to have as a kid. It's like all these triangle pieces put together with elastic. Okay. Now, we are going to lay one piece over the other like that. No, like that. You want this, you want one with the fold up, the other with the fold in. So the folds are basically going to be together. The flat sides are going to be together. And now we're going to tuck. We're going to take the first and we are going to fold down, crease it, and we're going to tuck it in to the pocket that we've created. And now we're going to do from the other side. And again, like I said, I'm working with very thick paper here. You will be using origami paper, so it will be a little bit easier to do this. But it gets a little tough to see this part. So you can see how I'm tucking if I use smaller. So I figured I would sacrifice my fingers to be able to make it big enough for you to see. All right, we flip. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, this does get, of course, harder as you go. You kind of have to wiggle. Oop. <laughs> you want to wiggle it so you've got enough space to work. I might have wiggled a little too far. All right. Fold it. Over. There we go. Using that permanent marker to my best advantage. And into the pocket it goes. You can see we're almost there. Almost there. And the last one. Wiggle it down. Get that fold in. This will build those fine motor skills for you. Right? We talk about that a lot actually in education because kids are on devices a lot these days. You know, and there's a lot of value to technology, but you don't get to use your hands quite the same way. All right. There is my ninja star. Awesome. It always feels good when I get it done. Give that a quick crease. So now it's time to wire this. And where did I put? Okay. So what I find helpful at this stage is to keep my circuit clear. And I'm gonna zoom a bit for you so that we can see what we're doing. I label them with the cardinal directions. So I'm gonna label north, east, south, and west. And I'm using pencils that I can erase it later if I want to. Um, and the reason we do that is because as we line up our LEDs, we got to make sure that we're um, keeping the flow of the electricity in mind. So I've got my binder clips, got my LEDs, one, two, three. Oh no, did one get away? Yeah, here it is. Um, so I have my positive, and for my first one, I'm going to check my diagram over here. And the first one is going to be positive lead to the left, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and use my fingers to kind of bend that up. I, may, I call it bunny ears. I kind of think of them as bunny ears. You can use your needle nose pliers if you prefer. The important thing is to be careful that we don't break the leads or disconnect them from the, the bulb. And I'm just going to kind of put it here. And this is where the binder clips that come in your kit are super handy because I can just use them to hold my LED in place as I work. If you don't have them, you can use a little bit of invisible tape that works too. Okay, so I'm gonna go to east next, rotate. Now I want, for this one, I rotate 90 degrees, wait, 90 degrees, we're going west. So now I want, I want to alternate it so that the positive, 
Let's go into my positive, right? Yeah. And here we go. This is again because it's a, now if we were doing this as a series circuit, we'd want these to be on the opposite way. But because we're doing this in parallel, we are going to match them up. Okay, rotate 90 degrees and got my negative. Woo! So positive is going to go here, negative is going to match. And this is another case if you want to, it's a good opportunity to use that pencil again and just mark your positives and negatives because you will, once you start taping things down, you won't be able to see the leads too well anymore. And last one. And again, my positive. Just gonna fold that up. Bunny ears. And there we go. And attach it. So you can see again, um, if you're working with the smaller, so it, especially if you're working with younger kids, you may want to go big on this just so that they can kind of keep it organized. So I'm just gonna mark positive negative, negative, positive, positive, no, yes, positive, negative, and negative, positive. Okay. That way when I wire, when I uh, use my maker tape, I've got it all the right way because I want to make sure that I, uh, I do this correctly. So now we've got that down. Now we're going to use a piece of copper tape. We're going to connect our northeast and our southwest first. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it. And just use my maker tape. And again, this is why I love maker tape for this. Don't pull it all the way off, just leave a little bit. I'm gonna take my binder clip off here. And I'm just going to hold this on and the maker tape is really nice because it's got a good flex to it so I can kind of work it over the side of my um, creation and that makes it a lot easier to attach. So make sure you get a good connection with your um, LED. I'm going to press it in there. And I'm going to kind of come around the corner and this again is where that flexibility really pays off. And coming back up. And now again, you want to make sure that this tape does not touch this lead. Very important that they are separate. Otherwise, you're going to short your circuit. It's not going to work. Okay. So I've got that negative done. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again. Just kind of make sure I have about the right amount. I always try to go a little too much rather than too little. Oh, we, we're just about there. Um, okay, we're almost done. Carefully take off that. And my tape. And you can go back in with a little extra tape if you want to really make sure that you get that lead just right. Um, you have time to do that. I am just kind of working quickly because I know we're coming up on that hour mark already. And I hope that you're still here for the ride with me. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cut off my excess again. Okay. And again, all these instructions will be up on the website. So you'll have them available for you to use with your kit. Okay, so now I've got my negatives done. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my positives, exact same idea. And this is again why I kind of mark them, and I wanna make sure that they're marked so that I know what I'm doing. It's worth taking the time. Where's my, all right. Again, just kind of eyeballing. I'm just removing the binder clips as I go because I don't need them once I've taped it. Now, I will tell you this project does not have a switch. So 
If you want to add a switch, I will show you where you can do that. I find the LEDs last a pretty good long time um, and they get played with and lost and you know destroyed pretty quickly. Um, so I'm not too worried about a switch on this one, but if you do want to do a switch, it's I'll show you where you can do that. Okay. Oh, am I going off camera? I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to go off camera. Origami's tough to do on camera, I'm discovering. Worth it, but, and there we go. Just kind of wrapping that around, cutting off my excess. Almost there, keeping that excess too, because I'll be using that. You can always use a little extra. You see how this is a great connection? I might come back in there a little later and add a little more tape. Okay, so that's my positive, and now I'm just gonna do, like I said, same thing on the other side. So what we've basically done is chain together our positives and negatives. <clears throat> and they're going to operate as essentially two LEDs instead of four by making what we call a parallel circuit. And you can read more about that. I have a whole discussion of uh, series versus parallel circuits in the book um, for those of you that might want to use it uh, for an educational uh, scenario. I love teaching circuits. In the makerspace um, at my last teaching job, uh, I got to do electricity in seventh grade and we did a lot of paper circuits for that reason because I just felt it was so much better for the kids to be able to build as many circuits as possible in as many different fun ways as possible so that they really came to understand it. So we did um, lots of paper cards, we did paper origami, and it was just it was great ways for them to hands-on experience how electricity works. Um, so I'm a huge fan. All right. Now, um, we are going to connect negative to, is it negative? No, it's positive to positive, right? <laughs> yes. So we're going to take a piece and we're going to wrap from here to here along the back. If you want to put in a switch, this is where to do it. You would just go part of the way and the rest of the way, and then you can use um, a little paper clip. You can even punch a hole here with a brad and do a brad and a paper clip if you want. Um, like I said, I, for today's purposes, I'm not too worried about it. Man, I'm getting low on tape. <laughs> Always got to keep plenty around. Okay, so my positive, just going to do a quick measure, right? And around. Home stretch, we're almost done, don't worry. Almost done, almost ready for the payoff. And burp, there we go. Again, see this is why I always mark it because I've done this many times and I still can get confused sometimes as to which way is which. I'm going to wrap around like that, okay? I'm going to cut off the excess. Now, time to attach our negative leads. And this is very simple. I've got my battery. Um, we are going to attach, oh, and I should have done that. I always forget to, for some reason, I'm always like, I get to this point, I was like, wait, how am I attaching the battery? I need one more little piece, basically to go from that positive to the center. And I always mean to just do one long piece, and I forget, but it's got conductive electric, uh, adhesive, so it's no big deal. You still get a really good connection. Generally, you want to try to have as few breaks as you can, but I found with the maker tape, I get really good adhesion, so it's not as big a deal. Um, and I don't get the breaking that you might with um, traditional copper tape. So um, I don't find it to be too much of an issue if I have to add a big piece, another piece. So we are going to put the positive side of our battery is going to go down. I'm just going to do the little loop thing like I did before with the adhesive out. And here we go, like that. And positive goes down. And now, easy peasy, tape to each of the negatives. You can, again, probably do this as one piece. I prefer to do it two separate. That way, if I have a problem, it's easier to take apart. Because if you've ever done any kind of paper circuits, you know sometimes things go wrong, and that's okay. So we just connect negative, and it should. Okay, there we go. Ta-da! We've got blinking. And do the other side, and the rest will light up. 
it just feels fun when it starts to blink. I love it. I love blinking lights. You can also find um, blinking lights that do multiple colors. Those are awesome too. They should do uh, some of those in the kit. That'd be fun. Um, and here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, I have overpowered it. <laughs> Even in parallel, my five millimeters. Oh, come on, guys. Sometimes this happens when you. Come on. And this is why I do it. Hmm, what did I do? It was working. Like, you saw it was working, right? <laughs> anyway, obviously, I wiggled something out of my circuit. So we will just have to figure that out. But for now, you get the idea. <laughs> okay? Um, and that is your Ninja Star. But since it is already after 2 o'clock, um, I will troubleshoot this myself. So what usually happens is it's something that will wiggle out. Usually the leads here will wiggle out and so I'll go in with a little extra tape and really attach them well to make sure that they're, um, you know, properly adhered. The other thing you can do is um, use the freshest battery possible. And if you're really having trouble, you can size down to a smaller LED. Um, so there you go. Whew. <laughs> Coming back over to this camera here. So those are our fun origami projects using the make kit and our maker tape, the fabric maker tape, which is awesome. Um, these kits are great. I think they, they're retailing for $30. So you get a ton of projects out of this. This has got 30 pieces of origami paper, um, 15 LEDs, five of those motors. So for the motors. So you can make a ton of stuff with one kit. So if you have a family, very economical to have something that all the kids can do. Just imagine you've got a bunch of those little, everybody makes a ladybug, right? Put it on a tray or on a, a plate and let them all kind of knock each other around. Uh, you can sumo wrestle with your bugs. It's a lot of fun. Um, thank you so much for coming here today and joining us online. This is my last summer um, maker camp of the year, but I will be back in the fall. My name is Sandy Roberts. I am a STEM educator. I've had a blast getting to know you guys online this summer. Um, I'm also the author of <laughs> the Big Book of Maker Camp Projects. So if you want to keep the camp fun going all year round, this has got over a hundred different projects in it. Um, everything from crafting to coding. So it's a little bit of every something for everyone. Um, I hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the fall. Take care.